Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on group by and having clause in SQL. In today's presentation, we are going to focus on two important keywords of SQL, the group by and having. Let's start the session with the first keyword, group by. Let's assume we are maintaining a student table in a database. And let's also assume that all class students entries are there in that single table. Suppose we want to know class-wise student list. And it's easy to retrieve this because we have var clause. We can give the condition var class equal to the appropriate class so that we will get the information about that particular class. But my question here is, we want to do some operations only with that particular class. Say for example, we want to know how many students are there in each class. Let's say there is a table with 500 entries or 500 rows. And these 500 rows are the information of students who are studying in different different classes. To filter, obviously we can use where. But if I want to know how many students are there in each class, I need to group each class, isn't it? So group I is going to help us in that perspective. In simple terms, suppose we want to find the number of students in each class. In that case, we can go for group by. How it is going to do that? So it is going to arrange the data into groups. For example, in a table, if we have five different departments, if we use group by, then we can retrieve the data department by department because that's what the job of group by. It's going to group. Don't worry about this now. Anyway, when we see some examples, you will be able to understand clearly. From this, it's clear that we are going to arrange the data into groups and how we are going to group it. Are we going to group as per rows or columns? Obviously, as per rows. So, group by clause is going to group the rows that have same values. Since we are able to group the rows that have same values, we can perform the operations whatever we wanted to do. And this group by clause is often used with aggregate functions. We have already seen about aggregate functions in the previous lecture. So, we are going to combine the group by clause with aggregate functions to reap some other additional benefits. Let's see an example, then it will be easy for you to understand. Let's start with the first example. The table that we are taking is an employee table which contains ID, name, department, salary and city as the columns or attributes. And I have populated some records here. Firstly, let's start with applying the group by clause. Select count ID. This count is an aggregate function. Count ID, comma, city from employee, group by city. So what we are going to do is we are going to select two columns. One is count of ID. That means we are going to count the ID value. So how many ID values are here? Nine ID values are here. So when we use count ID without group by, it will list nine because nine rows are there. But here what we have introduced? We have introduced group by. So see how the operation is going to be changed. So we are going to perform select operation by selecting count ID and city. So we are going to retrieve the city column also. From which table? employee table which is this and we have applied what group by city so we are going to retrieve the records by grouping by the city let's see the output then it will be easy for you to understand if you see here the first column is going to be count id and the second column is going to be city and this is retrieved from employee table and we have performed this group by on which column the city column so this is the city column so just see how many entries are there in new delhi in New Delhi, there is only one entry and that's why we are getting this one as New Delhi. So what we have actually performed is we have grouped the rows as per the city and we have performed the count of that city. There is one row with Ahmedabad, there are three rows with Bangalore, Chennai 2, Hyderabad 1, New Delhi 1 and Ranchi 1. So we have performed group by operation by counting how many entries are there for each city. This is what I told you. It is like finding the number of students in each class. Here in each city. The output what we are seeing here is sorted according to the city. I hope things are clear to you. So this is about the group by class. We are done with the first keyword of the day which is group by. We have one more keyword left. What's that? The having clause or the having keyword. What is the use of having this having clause? Suppose we want to filter groups based on a specified list of conditions, we can go for having. Now you may be asking, in order to do this, we already have where. So where keyword is also going to filter, but that filters the columns 
whereas having is going to filter the groups where this grouping is already done by group by clause. So in other words, we are going to restrict the result returned by the group by clause. Let's assume we have retrieved the records by using group by clause. Now after retrieving the records, if we want to apply some condition, in such case we cannot go for where the only way to filter or apply condition is by providing having clause. So it's clear that where keyword cannot be used with aggregate functions and that's why we are going to use having clause with group by and aggregate functions. And obviously group by clause is going to group the rows that have same values which we have already seen in the previous slide. And we are also sure that this having is also having more wide usage with aggregate functions. No worries, when we see an example, it will be easy for you to understand. So I am bringing in the same employee table here. The query is select count id comma city from employee group by city. Up to this, this was our last example. We retrieved the count of each city. Now what condition I am enforcing? I am enforcing the count id is greater than or equal to 2. So what's the output for this? The output is we are going to get only two rows. One is three Bangalore and two Chennai. Why? If you see, we have enforced a condition having count ID greater than or equal to two. I'll just show you the previous output. So in the previous output, we have obtained these many results. Now in the query, I have used having count ID greater than or equal to two. So only these two rows are matching. And that is why we are getting this output. So what do we mean by this? It's simple, we have grouped the rows using group by and after grouping, if we want to apply some condition, we can go for having. So that's the use of group by and having clause. And if you note in both the examples, we have used an aggregate function called count. You can also use other aggregate functions like sum, min, max and average. Before we sign out, let's see the homework question. Let's use the same employee table for the homework question. But here we have two questions. I request you to try solving these two questions and post your answers in the comments section. Question number one, find the department wise count of all employees. And the second one is, how many departments have more than two employees? You will be able to answer these two questions if you are clear with the examples what we have seen in this presentation. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.